Hello, everybody good? Jane. Hi, Cindy. How are you? I'm awesome. How are you? Dr. Nielsen just ran down and went to the bathroom. <laughs> so hold on. I know, right? Hey, so are we doing... Um... Here we go. We're recording. So this is awesome. Hi, everybody. You are listening to another episode of Living with Lyme. And this is Cindy Kennedy. And I want everybody to hear this. You hear what that is? That is a cup of tea, and it has wonderful things in it like maca and uh, chaga, and those are really good soulful healing foods, natural foods, and they're also listed under adaptogens. So today, we have very big experts on what those are, as well as how do we function in our daily stressful life. So I'm going to introduce to you, number one, Jane Barlow, who is an herbalist. She is an outdoors, outdoors, injuvenating, okay, we'll cut that part. <laughs> That's okay. I wanna to introduce to you Jane Barlow, who is an herbalist. She is an enjoyer of the outdoors. She's a fitness guru. She actively pursues a vibrant and healthy lifestyle for herself and helps others achieve the same. She is a mom, she is a grandma, she's out there in Utah and she is quite vibrant. I can't wait to speak with her today. Second, this is the first time I got a two-on-one going on here. Uh, the other guest with her is Dr. Brandon Nielsen. He is both a chiropractor and a naturopath. He practices both. He is a functional medicine person over the past last 15 years. He's the founder of an emotional stress release. And we're gonna have a lot of uh, fun with that one because that is something that we need to be taught. We need to see it. And uh, I'm going to let them talk about, there's a video out there on this. So he, also lives in Utah, and his motto is living in wholeness every day. Guys, welcome. Welcome to Living with Lime. Thank you. Thank you. We're so happy to be oh, here. man, we're so excited. <laughs> hey, not a problem. I like that, you know, because some people, um, when I've interviewed them, um, it's hard. It's hard because either they're very very monotone or whatnot. I have to draw some things out. I don't think I'm going to have to do that with you guys <laughs> at all. You want to draw some things out? Nah, we're here. You're good. You're going to have to shut us up, Cindy. Oh, I don't mind. I don't mind. This is awesome. It makes Cindy, it easy. We have been looking forward to this, so thanks for having us. Get out of town. Get out of town. This is awesome. And you know what? This is a topic that people might hear uh, but un don't understand. And truly, it is something that everybody should know about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask questions and I'm going to learn along with the listeners. I want to know what is an adaptogen? What does that actually mean? Now, the two of you are going to have to fight for, you know, the, the talking part. So each of you together, raise your hand when you're going to talk. So you're not... Uh, combining efforts there. Yeah, sure. So I'll start out. So an adaptogen, I mean, simply put, it's being able to adapt to a stress. So they call it an adaptogen because what it does, generally you're talking about an herbal type remedy, whether in the tincture form, uh, and I don't know if your listeners know, but like a decoction infusion, all those type of things, or just the, the straight um, the straight plant as a capsule form. In, in your case, you're drinking a tea. 
Yes. And which is so, and what that adaptogen then does in its basic form is helps you adapt to stress because we all have stress. And so what they do is they actually help us adapt to stress. That's in its simplest definition, um, really. And then, and then really what you're doing by adapting to stress is you're returning to homeostasis or a state of, um, of health or lack of dis-ease, right? So you're in a state of health. So that's really in the simplest form what an adaptogen does. I get it. I get it. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting because you just have to wonder how these uh, substances know how to adapt. You know, I mean, how does it actually know what to do for your body? Well, I think that's the beauty of plant medicine really is, you know, mother nature is perfect and God made plants that are on this earth to help humans. And I really think that, uh, you know, you have all these medicinal properties and they're different for a bunch of plants. So adaptogenic herbs, what I believe is they know how to go in and balance body chemistry. And like Dr. Nielsen said, put your body in homeostasis. It brings you into balance because in our modern world, our body doesn't know when it's full of stress that it's not running from a tiger. It goes, it goes into fight or flight when we might just be having to fight with our spouse or it's stress from our job or just normal things. So you know, I think plants are made so perfectly. There, there are lots of components that are studied. A lot of the properties of plants and all the breakdowns of the vitamins and the minerals and all of the components of the plant. And I think adaptogenic herbs just have special components that help to balance your body chemistry. Oh, what are um, some of the adaptogens that people should know about? So... Um, before I answer that, I'll echo a little bit on um, what Jean said about being able to adapt stress. If we got into the biochemistry, one of the biggest things that the adaptogenic herbs do and adaptogens do is they actually help to um, decrease a cortisol response is one of the best ways to look at that. And cortisol being the stress hormone, right? Also adrenaline coming from the adrenal glands, also cortisol coming from the adrenal glands. So when we think of adrenal, above the renal which are kidneys right so kidneys are renal or kidneys they call them renal or hepatic excuse me renal and then above that would be your adrenal glands so in the adrenal glands you have you know adrenaline adrenal right you have cortisol and and when we think of stress hormones the biggest thing we think of is cortisol so one of the biggest things that adaptogenic herbs do is actually decrease the cortisol response they also help upregulate the adrenal glands. So if you've been stressed for a long time, what they'll actually do is give the adrenal glands a break by, because they'll make the adrenal glands more efficient so that you can actually adapt to the stress. So that's the other thing they do. That they, help, they help they decrease the cortisol response. They help the adrenals. Um, they actually give a boost to the adrenals, right? So they're not as fatigued. And then the third thing that they do is they actually, because you're helping decrease the cortisol response, what's interesting about that is you also then decrease the immune response. That's what's so phenomenal about the adaptogens is, is they're the coolest, some of the coolest herbs because you, you help so many systems of the body. They're more of like a holistic herb when you think of it. So the next answer to that would be what is what are some of the herbs that that we like to use i mean when you say something that's going to help so many different systems the first thing i'm going to think of is panax ginseng in greek panax means all healing right so panax is all healing so asian ginseng is one of the first ones i think of i think of my other a's like ashwagandha and then astragalus those are some of the top threes that i use in my clinic and then a whole list of others and Jane will tell you about maybe some of the other ones. Yeah, like so one of my favorites, I love those that, that uh, you just said. Um, so some of my favorites are holy basil, uh, suma root, so S-U-M-A, that comes from Brazil, that's a very nice adaptogenic herb, um, and maca. You know, those are some of my three favorites along with the ashwagandha and the, the panax ginseng. I mean, these are really, a lot of people might be very familiar because a lot of these herbs are popular. Like ashwagandha is really popular, but they might not realize exactly why it's so popular. So that was a, a beautiful description of what and, they do. And then some other herbs that I like are, if we go further in the alphabet, because I'm thinking alphabetically, elethro, I absolutely love. Then I would love 
maca, which you're drinking, and the chaga, and cordyceps. So when we get into the fungi or yep. fungi, yep. Um, absolutely phenomenal. Then you get into reishi, rhodiola, rosea. So it's like, oh my goodness, I just named how many now? So like what you're drinking right now is phenomenal. Like maca and chaga, phenomenal. Great tea. Um, and then you can use some of the other ones that Jane mentioned exactly. I mean, those are phenomenal. But the cool thing about it is they don't just help your immune system. I mean, your they don't just help with the stress. They actually help with your immune system and then tonify your nervous system. They're really, I mean, honestly, anybody who's sick or chronically sick, you need to be on some type of an adaptogenic herb. Right. See, there's... 10 or so that you just uh, mentioned, yeah, where 10. do people, where do people start? You can't just, you know, do all of them. Where, where, what is the most bang for your buck? You know what? I think it just depends on, on what you're dealing with. And so let's you... talk about that chronic person, whatever okay. the chronicity is, uh, especially let's think about Lyme mm -hmm. disease. So chronic, um, I'm trying to think, what have I used chronic? I've used all right, I've got, I've got a patient in my mind right now, chronic. So she doesn't have Lyme. She has other, some other conditions I won't go into, but what have I used for her? Oh, I have used Asian ginseng. Remember, panic ginseng. Now, one thing I'll tell you this. Sometimes I'll use, and this is how I pronounce it, and I could be pronouncing it wrong, but elethro or Siberian ginseng is easier to say. And it's not like a true ginseng, but it's, it's actually less expensive. Then ginseng can be pretty expensive, like Asian ginseng, right? Root, sometimes people will call it, but you guys, yeah. Um, so that's, I've used cordyceps, cordyceps, Asian ginseng, and what else have I used with her? Um, rhodiola rosea, those, that combination. And I'll generally add, just so you know, with that, I'll usually do about three, kind of like Jean mentioned three, and we mentioned about three at a time, but I'll usually add panathenic acid and pyridoxal 5 phosphate. So vitamin B5 and then vitamin B6. Vitamin B6 in its most active form is P5P, P5P called pyridoxal 5 phosphate. So I'll generally add those two B vitamins to it, possibly a little bit of vitamin C. It just helps the blend a little bit better. So I'd probably start out with that, like an Asian ginseng, um, a cordyceps, and then like a rhodiola rosea. Okay. Um, Jean, you might even differ on that. And that's, yeah. I like, I, I've, uh, you know, there's an HPA access, which is, you guys know, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal kind you of know, stuff. Uh -huh. And when you're, you know, on high alert, you need to support that, as you said. And um, I know that rhodiola can give you a little bit of boost, right? Right, right. So Absolutely. some are calming, some are soothing, some are nourishing. So with the blend that you just said for someone who's dealing with something chronic, you're trying to soothe them. You're trying to boost their immunity, correct? That's exactly right. 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 And it's, you know, in terms of their, their um, properties, are they best in a certain way, such as these are best to take in between meals. These are best to take in a tea form. You know, don't ever buy it in X, Y, or Z form. Tell me more. You know what? I personally, I think that any form that you can get it in can be very good as long as you're sourcing. You know, I, I would be more careful about your sourcing than the form. Um, I do love liquids because they absorb right into the bloodstream. They act very quickly. Your body doesn't have to digest them or break them down. That's why I love teas or tinctures or extracts um, because your body knows, your body doesn't have to do anything except just absorb them. They work very quickly and they go right, they go right to work. Um, but there are some things that I love in capsule form too, you know, like cordyceps and reishi. I, I, I like the fact that they go through the digestive system. So I, I really think that people need to do research on first good sourcing. You want an organic source. You want a company that you trust. Um, and then I, I think you need to not get overwhelmed with all the choices because that's where the problem comes in. Well, yeah. it is, right? Because there's too many and people go too fast. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, I'm kind of giving that same three, but I would even just start depending 
Um, I would probably start with one. I agree with that. You know, just like one, choose, choose one. I mean, and the biggest thing, Cindy, for your listeners is, um, you know, it's like, do I do it in a liquid? Do I do it in infusion? Do I do it as a decoction? Do I do it as a tea? Do I do it in capsules? Do it in the form that you will take it. Sometimes my patients, when I'm using like with kids, young, not generally, like I usually don't have to use adaptogens for kids. I'm just giving an example, but I'll usually use liquids. Like I love Jane's liquids. I'll use the Barlow Herbal liquids. If I'm, if I'm doing adults, sometimes they're like, I'm not going to take the liquids. I'm like, take it in the capsule form then. Um, and that's how I'll have them take it. So um, the biggest thing is I, I use both, you know, I use both. I use tinctures mainly and i'll use some little bit of oils and then i'll use a lot of um, capsules but the biggest thing is when patients will say do i need to take it with food and i'll say most adaptogenic herbs you don't have to but the biggest thing for me is i say take it start it take it and uh, see how it does start with one see how you do, and then go from there. Yeah, and be consistent. I think that's what I find with people is they get overwhelmed when they start learning about all this stuff and they want to take 10 things. <laughs> yeah, don't. <laughs> yeah, so, so that is a great, that's a great bit of first advice is find something, find it in the form that you will take. Because I have people that really love the concept of something liquid, especially a concentrated tincture, but then they don't like the taste, they don't like the inconvenience of it, they have to find you know, water or something to put it in or... It's just, they're not used to taking liquids, so capsules are easier. It's just like when someone says, well, I want to exercise and lose weight, but I don't know what exercise to start with. Well, start with what you're going to do. Are you going to get out and walk? Like, start with what, what you will do. So it's the same with taking any type of supplement or an adaptogenic herb. Right. Start with what you'll take. That was the perfect advice. That's perfect. That is perfect. You know, I just uh, posted on Facebook something to start with. I said five to the third, five, five, five. And I said five movement, just move. I don't care what you're doing. Yes. Move. Right. Five, five, uh, five minutes of, of some gentle stretching and then five minutes of mindfulness. And I talked a little bit about a water intake and it cracks me up because people are like, I said, half your weight in ounces, you know, start there. And I, I get emails. I don't understand that. So <laughs> I know, but people don't. Mm-hmm. What does that even mean? So, you know, the math, you just got to get, get that math. And, uh, you know, the good point, actually, that some of these adaptogens are available in different forms are people who are traveling a lot that liquid can be a problem, you know, getting on a flight. So being able to have it in a different, in a different way, uh, you know, to take with you or when you go on vacation, who doesn't, you know, want a vacation from everything, but you really shouldn't take a vacation from, from your herbs. Right. Yeah. I mean, sometimes there's a time and place when you're doing fasting or when you're rotating different things around, or if you're doing different cleanses, but for the most part, there's herbs, and supplements that I don't take a break from, and I definitely travel with them as well. Um, and, th- and then the thing is, is to not think too hard about all the little nuances of what if I took too many drops, or what if I don't get enough drops, or I, I, I'm, I'm always surprised at the whole, when you said, you know, you know, drink water. Like, I'm still surprised that people have to be told to drink water. <laughs> it's like, Come on, we're set more than 70% water. Oh, God. And you know, I, I, I mean this, but I don't mean this. People are such babies. I, 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 you know, I, I practice as a nurse practitioner for 21, almost 21 years. And, you know, as I did GYN, so I only got to see my patients once a year. So they would always say, I'll say, okay, you know, did you start with what we talked about last year? Yeah, I got it and I started, but then I lost track and I forgot and whatnot. It, it's trying to get these people to understand when you just completely stop, you're not really fortifying what you need to have that body, you know, work appropriately, right? Oh, and Jane. Great analogy. One of your videos, you talked about your body being the million dollar racehorse, right? That's right. Yeah. And would you, 
would you feed your million dollar race horse a lot of sugar? And you said, no, you wouldn't yeah. feed. Yeah. And we don't, we don't look at our body as that quote unquote temple that we really should. And I'm going to admit my hand is up in the air. As a younger person, when this wasn't in my face, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't, and I wish that I had someone who really supported this lifestyle to say, hey, this is what you can do better for yourself. This is what you can do better for your family. You know what I mean? I mean, Jane, you have kids, you have grandchildren. Dr. Nielsen, you have four children. You know, you're, you've really, you know, instill this into them, correct? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and I think, you know, what I, you know what I think the thing is, Cindy, is that people need to be willing to take personal responsibility instead of put, put the responsibility of their health onto their doctor or their spouse or someone else. And they need to be willing to be an outlier. You know, we, we always want to do what the crowds are doing and we're afraid to do something that might feel right to us, but that no one else is doing. You know, we need, we need to be, uh, brave and courageous and we need to step outside of of the crowds of people who are lining up for the for all like the fast food and all of the you know every time i drive past there's a mcdonald's next to the costco that i go to and there's two there's two drive-ins through this and and it's always there's always two lines of cars and every single time i drive by it it shocks me and I don't know why, but it's like, I still can't believe people are still eating there. So I think people need to be willing to, to take responsibility and stand on the outside of the crowds. And if someone makes fun of, like I have people that can't believe sometimes the way I take care of my health. Like there's things I don't do that most people do in the traditional medical model and I don't care. I don't care if they think I'm being irresponsible with my health, I don't care. Right, right, well the thing you is, do. I I don't know if you knew this though, but actually they're lining up at McDonald's now for ab adaptogenic herbs. They, <gasps> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, no, I, I did. No. I think I have a picture of Jane uh, right before the first window with baggies. And I'm, I'm thinking those are powders, right? Yeah. You, you found me out, man. <laughs> no, you know, I, I really want to tell you, thank you for putting this together. I mean, your, your podcast. And the reason why is because you, I believe you've got to have a group of like-minded individuals. I mean, that's why Jane and I, we, we try to as much in our busy schedules as get together because we're like-minded. We try to, you know, get with Cindy Kennedy here because we're like-minded here. And I think, I, I think you've, you've really put something special here to have a group because you've got to have support. It's hard. It's hard to do it on your own. I have my wife. She's phenomenal. She does all the cooking in our house, except sometimes I try to cook, you know, I try to, I try my hand at cooking once in a while. Oh, you know, it, I love to cook, but some, I'm just not phenomenal like she is, you know? And, and, and my kids, they're, they're willing to eat, but I think we have this support group together, you know? And, and I really appreciate what you've done if you, you've created this community where, where people can come together and they can start supporting one another and saying, you know, I'm kind of in the same boat, but let's not be in the same boat um, as far as like in misery, let's, let's help one another out and progress. That's why I love what you're doing here with this podcast is, is you're promoting, you're promoting health, you know, people with chronic disease, but like, what's, how can we break free? How can we get to the next level? And I think that's a big, big portion of you said earlier, you said, you mentioned a keyword support. You guys, you got to have support. You've got to team up. You've got to have friends because people don't understand weird. Like I know people think they're like, you know, all that, that weird stuff that Dr. Nielsen does adaptogenic, what, you know? And so, but I have my support group and, and that's the cool thing is like, I can be weird with Jane and she's cool with that. I can be weird with Cindy Kennedy. She's cool with that, but you got to <laughs> team up with the right group, right? Oh, right. Thank it's you. It's no, so thank true. You. Thank you so much. Uh, it's so well appreciated. I've never had uh, a hobby or I don't know, I really can't call this a job. There isn't really any income with it per se, <laughs> but I throw it out there. You know, yeah. when I'm practicing, uh, I got, I have that person in front of me and you get that, you know, response right away with something like 
podcasting, it's available, it's out there, but I don't know what's going on, you know? And, and this year I'm really hoping because this is, um, this is the second year that we can really get a community, a, a better base of people that really can find the right help because this is a huge problem. And now with the advance of telehealth and being able to reach people across state lines, it's really important. And, uh, and I think grouping people together and really encouraging them to be optimistic that there is a way to help themselves. And sometimes it's as simple as what we're talking about today, right? Yeah, well, not only that, Cindy, I think you never know who's listening. And, and the person that finds this podcast either via someone else or by accident. And, you know, it, these things have the ability to, you know, go crazy and ch actually change someone's life for the best, for the, yeah, for the better. So. So. You know, I think it's an amazing thing. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I'm looking at some of my notes here, which are scattered about, uh, probably makes sense for me to ask. We know that adaptogens are really helpful for that stress issue, whether we're getting stress internally, whether we're getting stress from the outside world in terms of our environment, but are there other benefits that we see. We did mention immunity, um, but are there other, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of things like women, because I practiced gynecology for so long, they always talked about, oh, I don't have any sex drive. Is there something more adaptogenic that can help in that category? <laughs> You're drinking it. <laughs> Maca, <laughs> Maca, <baby. laughs> <laughs> Come on. Um, okay, okay. Now, here's How much thing. do I need? <laughs> <laughs> well, ten uh, cups, ten cups every day. Ten Ooh. cups every day. You know, <laughs> maca, I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> I uh, yeah, maca is excellent. As far as for here's the thing. In order to have a vitality and a sense of uh, you know strong libido. One of the things you do need to take care of is um, your endocrine system. You know, sometimes we don't think of that, but we think, oh, reproductive system only. But when we look at the body, like, you know, holistically, we have to look at as well blood sugars and endocrinology. So when we look at that, one of the cool things, um, we talked about cortisol earlier, but the, the cortisol rhythm, you know, as, it, as, as a wave, we should see cortisol um, start to become the highest right before we break our fast or breakfast, right? It's because cortisol maintains blood, blood sugars. And that's one of the things is when people, so when you talk about, oh, being able to have a sense of vitality or increased libido, or if you have no libido, the first area I'd actually look at is, are your adrenals in check with your blood sugars? And one of the cool things that adaptogens do, anytime people, when we start talking about, um, you know, when we start looking at low libido, we've got to make sure blood sugars are in check as well as maintaining blood sugars through cortisol. So that's one of the areas that I would, I would say is a big thing is looking into blood sugars and adaptogenic herbs help with that. Um, they also help with, like you said, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access, which also then leads to um, helping with thyroid. So one of, if there is a thyroid component, one of the um, adaptogenic herbs I wouldn't necessarily recommend unless you get tested would possibly uh, be ashwagandha because it can actually stimulate thyroid. And if you're overproduction in thyroid, then you might want to watch that one. But in general, it's going to be safe, but that is one that I'd recommend. So again, to answer your question for libido, you're, you need to also look into blood sugars and endocrine function. The adaptogenic herbs are going to help. The number one herb for that would be uh, maca. And so I have two other uh, concerns. One is about sleep. That's yes. Probably a huge one for a lot of people. And of course, if we're constantly in that fight or flight mode, uh, we're not going to sleep really well. So what, what would you suggest for sleep? You know, that can be a complicated issue, but to me, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a, big, that's a big issue that we actually get all the time. Um, there's a couple of herbs that are not adaptogenic herbs that I really love to help 
uh, calm the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, the number one thing is um, valerian root. And then uh, my dad actually made a blend, a tincture, and added uh, blue vervain to it. And that's a really nice, that really that's actually- in your artery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It calms, it calms the, those two systems, those two nervous systems. But my, what I find is this, people, this goes back to lifestyle things. People need to, they need to exercise. They need to disconnect from technology for at least an hour before they go to, to sleep. They need to make sure that their room is cool, dark, and quiet. Most, a lot of times people go to sleep literally with their cell phones next to their bed charging. Bad. And bad, it's bad, bad for, bad, it's bad. bad for a lot of reasons besides the fact that it's, it's giving you notifications and it's lighting up, but it also, the, the internet waves, the, um, the EMFs, EMFs. The EMFs yeah. you know, th that's terrible, terrible for you. But, and a lot of people don't have their room dark enough for their body to be able to create melatonin. So you need to have a perfectly pitch black room and it needs to be quiet and it needs to be cool. So when you make your room an environment where you can get a good night's sleep and then you put yourself in a place without the technology, you know, read yourself to sleep. If you can't get to sleep, go to sleep without scrolling through social media first, don't, you know, get out of the habit of doing that and, and read, get, pick up a normal book, not your iPad with your Kindle, because then you're getting that bright screen. This is going to, again, mess up your getting ready for sleep patterns. You know, so the, the herbs are great and the herbs are very effective, but you, the lifestyle factors are more important in my opinion. Right. We're just doing too much um, yeah. on a constant basis. One more uh, thing that I get asked a lot is anxiety and depression. What do you guys think about that? Oh my gosh, that's another big complicated thing because right. it, it's, there's so many factors that could, that could cause anxiety and depression. I think a lot of I think we bring a lot of that on ourselves because we can't shut our brains off. And we also look at social media, what other people are doing and we feel inadequate. We feel anxious because we're not good enough. Um, I, you know, I think that, that that's such a huge, huge topic. I mean, what do you think Dr. Nielsen? So I'll, I'll say a couple of things, both on the sleep, one thing on sleep and then I'll come back to anxiety, depression on sleep. Um, you know, in Chinese medicine, looking at depending on what the hours are, if you're looking at waking up, at 3 a.m., there's certain organs like liver, but I'll, t I'll say this. When you are in adrenal um, fatigue or even adrenal exhaustion, meaning you've been stressed for so long, your body hasn't been able to adapt to the stress, your body will not just die. It has to survive. And the reason it ha you know, the reason what will happen is we'll actually kick in adrenaline in the place of cortisol. So as you're sleeping through the night, the cortisol is going to continue to raise in your system to maintain healthy uh, blood sugar levels, okay? Insulin, different topic, regulates blood sugar, different topic, different day. But I'll just say this, the cortisol is going to be building, so then at breakfast, you're going to eat or you're going to drink, or eat, okay? So what I see a lot of times with patients when they're having difficulties with sleep, this is just one component of sleep, you guys. Like Jane said, there's so many facets of sleep. But a lot of times I'll see that patients will wake up during the night because their adrenaline is kicking in because their adrenals are exhausted or they're fatigued to the point that they just, they're no longer functioning. The cortisol isn't doing its job because cortisol is still necessary, but it's not doing its job. And so they kick into an adrenaline and they wake up. Okay, so that's just one facet of the sleep that I thought I'd mention, which the adaptogenic herbs actually help with, okay? Then the next component with anxiety and depression, whoo, this is huge, huge nowadays. And yes, absolutely, the, the um, starting with one adaptogenic herb can help, but where I see the lifestyle is so huge and then being able to manage stress appropriately because anxiety is it's generally unresolved, unresolved something. So fight or flight, right? So when you have unresolved emotion, it has to go somewhere and it's going to come out in anxiety when you don't even know. See, we, we get addicted. We actually get addicted to stress. It, it's the craziest thing, but an animal, you know, an animal can be stressed out. So like a deer, it runs from, um, a deer runs from a cougar, right? 
and then the cougar, it, it, let's say the cougar doesn't get it and the deer runs away. Well, the deer is going to go out and back to nature. It's going to slow down. It's going to de-stress. That cortisol was raised. Adrenaline was raised, but it's going to just chill and it's going to go back to eating. It's, for a while, it's still going to be really watchful and then it's just going to go back to tranquilo, just tranquil lifestyle. I'm good. I'm eating. Yeah. Life is so good as humans a deer. Don't know how to humans? Do oh no. <laughs> humans. Like I'm driving here. No, I'm driving here. Somebody cuts me off. I'm like, ah, I'm mad. I'm mad. Oh, I'm still mad. And then I go to the office and I'm still thinking about mad. And guess what? Just by thought alone now, we can raise all those hormones and we're ticked off and we're fight or flight. And we're like, we're mad. Well, guess what? <laughs> we calm down for a minute, but all we have to do is think about that again. Oh, we're mad. We're mad. And then we go right back into the stress response and we get addicted because those chemicals, they give us energy. Those chemicals give you a rush. So you don't have energy now, Cindy, not you, Cindy. I'm just using it as an example, but that's okay. You, you is, don't have is, energy. Is, and you're like oh, not drinking, you're mocking, you're chogging. You're just like, oh, I'm low on energy. Well, guess what your body says? I need, a, I need, I need energy. What should you do? Well, think of that anger. Get mad because oh, I'm mad again. Guess what? Now I've got the, I've got the rush. I've got the biochemical <laughs> rush once again. And so we get addicted to okay, so the so fight or flight response. So Cindy, here's the deal. Next time we have to do video because this man is going crazy over here. Well, you know what? I can tell because his voice is getting softer. He's probably leaning back and then it's getting louder but as I he's just, leaning forward. I, I just want you guys to understand you get addicted. You get addicted to your own problems. You get addicted to the stress because it creates a biochemical response and it gives you energy. And really, if you would take the time to learn how to truly stress release, meditation, change it, deep breath, deep breath <sighs> yoga, walk, just get out and walk. I know, you know? some of that sunshine. And be grateful. One of the highest frequencies you can get into, you guys, is gratitude. Okay, just if you can do nothing else as far as just de stressing, be grateful. Yep, yep. And, and now practice he's it. mindfulness. No. <laughs> what? I said now he's exhausted. Oh, he is. He's now his adre his adrenals are spent. <laughs> we'll we'll keep him quiet for a second or two. Oh no, no. I woke up at two a.m. this morning, Cindy. I woke up at two a.m. My daughter comes in. She's like, Dad, I lost my earring. She just got her ear pierced a little while ago. Aww. I and she's like. Dad, my earring, my earring. No, no, I'm up. My adrenaline was flowing. This wasn't a cortisol response. My adrenaline was flowing. I thought something was going on. I was up at two. And then the next thing I went to bed for a little while. Then my boy came in at five. Dad, got to go potty or whatever, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the hazard and the stuff that you have to struggle through to get to the point where that doesn't happen anymore except what really does happen is when those kids start going out late at night you can't fall asleep <laughs> until they come in so yeah, yeah. yeah instead of getting woken up you just can't fall asleep yes. um are different uh adaptogenic herbs specific for men versus women or it doesn't matter it's just adapting for the human being uh, Jane wants me to answer this <laughs> you know to be honest i i use them I'm trying to think, I'm going through, do I use, I would say I use more maca for men. I use more combinations with that in it, with other things, but I've used it a lot now for women. Historically, maca was more of a male herb, but to be honest, it's, it can be used for both. And I'm glad right off the bat, you know, you're drinking the maca chaga tea. Um, to be oh my honest, God, it, there's facial hair growing on me right now. No, now what do not. I do? <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. <laughs> Um, not with adaptogenic herbs. There's some other herbs that I don't really have. You know, I, I, I generally don't give prostate stuff for women. I generally, you know, I just, I just don't. Yeah. And I agree with that. <laughs> she I, agrees <laughs> that you shouldn't bring prostate no, stuff no, for women. No, 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 no. No, I'm no. joking. What I, I know, I know you won't. I'm know. glad she agrees with me. No, I agree with you as far as giving almost any adaptogenic herb can go to men or women. It just yeah. depends on. You know, it just depends. What's uh, what's Shizandra? Shizandra berry. Shizandra. It's from Asia. It's yeah. 
Does it help with focus? It does. It, okay. ha it helps with mental energy and clarity. It's uh, she Sandra, yeah, is awesome. It is awesome. It's is it like a bacopa? Uh, kind of different, but yeah, yeah. it can be. She's okay. uh, that's a great she Sandra's and she Sandra, either or sometimes they'll spell it with a Z, but that is you know, I didn't even mention mention that after I went through Reishi and Rhodiola. Shisandra, phenomenal. Another great one, yes, for mental clarity. I use that in, I'm just thinking, that's one of the main, main, and that's the berry. That's not the root. Most of the others are the root, but it, or they'll call it the fruit. But that one I use for a general, just kind of a calming, kind of a heart calming and just mental clarity. Um, I love that one. So that would be good for anxiety, Cindy. Absolutely. Oh, um, Along with Skullcap? Yeah, okay. Romania, Dong Kwai. Mm -hmm. um, really? As far as anxiety goes. Do you find that one works better for one person? I mean, do you try somebody on it, say, for a few months, and they're like, ah, I didn't get any better. Did, then do you move on to something different? Uh, you know what? I... I guess that's a good question. What do you? Yeah, think? so I'll. I, do you I guess will it's sometimes. a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that sounded terrible. The you moment I said it, that. I realized. <laughs> oh my gosh, Cindy. Yes, <laughs> no problem. That cracks me right up. Okay. Um. Yeah. So what I do? You can Cindy, cut that out. No, we keep it all in. It's good. Okay. What What, what I usually do with my patients is I, I I'll usually um I'll usually rotate, including with things like when I'm working with uh, chronic disease or um, um I usually rotate. I'll even including probiotic therapy. I'll usually rotate, and I'll I'll have people on it for at least a cycle of blood, meaning um you know a blood blood okay, red blood cells changing about 180, so three to four months. And I'll usually, um, so I'll, if we pull blood labs, then we'll usually go for about three to four month period. That way, you guys, it gives the body a chance to completely, you should have red, new red blood cells, a complete cycle of new red blood cells, about three to four months. So if, if um, I usually like to rotate. So within, to, but to be honest, to, kind of to answer that second part of your question, how long should somebody be on it kind of is what I hear you're saying. Should they notice a difference? I usually give, I mean, herbs, most herbs are pretty fast acting, but I usually say about, you guys, if you're not noticing within three weeks-ish, you need, there need something different. You got to change. something different or something to add. Add something. Uh-huh, exactly. And so, um, but, and then on that, oft times, yeah, I'm going to say about three to four months, and then I might switch it a little bit, or if their body is still doing phenomenal on it, don't switch it. I mean, if you're doing great, keep it. That's like that's that's your flow. Keep with your flow. Got it. Got it. What about we did start talking a little bit about mushrooms? Mm -hmm. um, are we talking about Ration. cooking with mushrooms, or are we talking about them as a, a supplement per se? I'm laughing, but no, not cooking with mushrooms. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I right. like that. I like that. Yeah, just go down to your, just go down to your local and get some mushrooms. No, those, that, I mean, mushrooms are good, like for chromium and stuff, but um, for certain nutrients, but no, more, more like um, in, I usually do it in the, the capsule form or else in the tablet form, or I will use it in a tincture, but yeah, more like the, the reishi is one of the most common that I'll use for as an adaptogenic. Yeah. And cordyceps. So cordyceps, cordyceps and, and, and yeah. reishi mushrooms. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And what do you find they're useful for? So the reishi, the biggest one I use is for immune. Um, the cordyceps I'll actually use, and it is an adaptogenic herb, but I'll, or a uh, fungus, but I'll still, I'll use it as for an immune response to boost the immune system. It's phenomenal. Uh, if you guys look at some of the literature on reishi, it's, it's a great, great uh, mushroom for, you know, the, well, anyways, anti, anti-microbial, I'll just say that. Okay. So a lot of people use it for anti-cancer as well. Okay. Um, when you look at cordyceps more, I look, I look, use that more for a straight up adaptogenic type when people are, I'll even use it sometimes for blood handling issues. I'll use that to be able to calm the system so that the adrenals will get a little bit of a break and the adrenal glands will work more efficient, efficiently. Are, are, any, are any of these helpful for detoxification? 
you know, people who have Lyme and they're processing a lot and, you know, I know they need help with their immune status, but what about all this stuff that we're trying to drag out of them and excrete? I mean, it absolutely does because, and that's part of the reason why I, I'll usually add like a B5, B6 to actually support the liver, um, like a panathenic and a pyridoxal 5-phosphate just to support some of those pathways. I generally don't use adaptogenic herbs for straight up for liver. I'll usually use other phase one, phase two detoxifiers, maybe even use like an S-acetylglutathione, but I usually don't use um, an adaptogenic herb specifically for that. Does it help liver? Absolutely. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, what would I use specifically for liver as an well, adaptogenic like herb? Oh yeah, I can't think of either. But uh, you know, things like dandelion and milk thistle are always really you know chunky. Right, right. Those yeah. are all really good. But it herbs. does help hepatic fun function. Right, right. It's right, just right. not specifically. I usually use more specific for hepatic function in addition to the uh, to the uh, adaptogenic. Yeah, herb. and if you're looking at detoxifying, which which everyone, especially people with Lyme, should do. You know, you're looking at. I would look at things like detoxing from heavy metals and detoxing, a, doing a parasite cleanse, you know, doing things to go after candida to help these things clear out of the system so the body has a better chance to, to heal from Lyme. Exactly. So, you know, those exactly. aren't necessarily, those are different, those are whole different, you know, sets of herbs that people can go through different rounds of heavy metal detox, parasite cleanses, candida cleanses, et cetera. On right. the one thing I was going to say though, sometimes on the fermentation or on, on the, the uh, mushrooms, the, um, the reishi, not as much, but the cordyceps will actually, it does have a detoxification property to it. As far as I remember, I don't specifically use it for that, but it actually will help with the liver tone and kidney function, liver function, kidney function. So hepatorenal function, and right. that will actually detoxify cordyceps will. Right, right. You know, a lot of people are trying to get uh, the most bang for their buck because yes. money is always a big contributing factor uh, for people not having full treatment. They'll yes. pick and poke and can't do that, or they'll run down to their local pharmacy and pick up something that was, you know, said and I, I right. try to explain, you know, you're, why are you, this is suboptimal. These things are just not, you know, you're, you're, you think you're getting what you're supposed to get, but you're only maybe getting a portion of it. Why wouldn't you, you're spending the same amount totally, you know, to get what you need, but it's not what you need on a daily basis in that right in the right form, um, as well as the right, you know, milligrams or, or that uh, measurement. I completely agree with you, and I'll just I'll just say something with that is you um f what she's talking about, and so for your listeners, I want to say something is you guys with a professional nutritional supplement that's been verified with like spectroscopy, meaning you actually looking for certain markers in the herbal tincture or in the actual uh, capsule. So what she's saying is a lot of times you can just run down to some supermarket or go to a, a big um, a warehouse and buy, and I'm, without mentioning names, right, you can go to a warehouse and buy these, these bulk supplements or, or go and get these supplements. But the problem is one of the biggest reasons why a professional pharmaceutical grade supplement or an adaptogenic herb in this case costs what it does is because it goes through the proper testing and it's it's it is what it is and it's going to work the same each time now that being said sometimes we get a little variant in color a little variant in taste but it's still going to work exactly the same so really you get what you pay for you really do that's important that's important you know i want to take time um Dr. Nielsen, I want to talk about your emotional stress release. I actually saw, um, I think I saw a video on it, and I actually saw the two of you practicing it at one point, but can you talk about it a little bit more? I know it's something that's very active, and of course, we're recording here, audio only, but can you explain how it came to be and how people can learn more about it? Yeah, sure. So uh, emotional stress release, you know, I started kind of about 10 years ago. Uh, I won't tell you from my full story because that'll take too long. But 
basically I was at a point, you know, I graduated. I really didn't know if I wanted to be Dr. Nielsen, to be honest, I was kind of like done. Um, and I went through a really hard time in, in my, in my career. I, I actually went through, I counted up about eight different practices or trying to start my own practice or, I mean, seriously, like eight different times. And finally I, I shut my door and I was done. I said, I'm no more. I'm done being Dr. Nielsen. And my brother had actually come into town. I actually had to move into my parents' home and I was just alone. I stopped practicing and I thought, this was so dumb. Why did I do this? I spent all that money. I was in debt, overweight, all those things, you know. And my brother had come into town. He had learned a technique from uh, Dr. Chris Peterson, one of his mentors, and he um, did an emotional stress release type technique. Anyways, Cindy, within 30 minutes, what had taken me about three years like it was just changed, um, completely changed. And some of the biggest takeaways from that is I re realized even though I had failed, <clears throat> you know, eight times, I, I wasn't a failure. And, and even though, you know, um, I, I wasn't like doing as well as other doctors that maybe had graduated with me, I was okay because it was me. And I was like, man, I think people need to know this. Like all it was was some change in my belief right but but I didn't know how to change that and so one of the things that I did is started kind of on a quest to figure out how I could actually help people understand that without just always having to go to a doctor and basically how you do it so if you think of in in acupressure points or meridian points the forehead is the the emotional point so if you see somebody they're kind of emotional and they'll like smack their head that's like, oh, you'll see somebody emotional. Have you ever seen anybody emotional? Oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. they kind of lower their head down and they're like, they hit their head, they hit their forehead. That's the emotional point. Then the stress point to that is holding the stress, like the, whatever the stress is. And then the release point is heart. So when we always think of kind of the central point as heart or the emotional point, we almost universally we can agree is the heart. So when I think of emotional stress release, and there's the pre professional form of this where I actually have doctors, we, I teach doctors how to do it and they go through and they have clients and patients and they actually go through this whole system and they actually, I teach that to doctors. But for people at home um, to just go through this pro process quickly, again, emotional point is the forehead, stress point is holding the stress of you know whatever it is that's stressful and then release point on heart. With CPR, you check for the airway, breathing, and then um, circula circulation. Well, with ESR, you check airway will be down, so you're bowed down. The breathing, you're making sure that you're breathing in and out because breathing is the breath of life. And then you'll think of a little uh, cantation. Um, so the way this works, uh, do you want me to just kind of explain this and take somebody through this? Is that what you want me to do? Yeah, well, tell us about it, and then have you recorded this process oh, uh, yes. somewhere? Because that would be perfect. Um, understanding it, you know, uh, is great, but visualizing it is even better. Okay, so I'm going to interject something really quick before he finish before he finish it or keeps going, because this is something that I think people might not realize is that your emotions literally control the disease or health of your body. And if you learn this technique of releasing, literally releasing these emotions that keep you stuck, which is what is this technique he's talking about, is something that any person can learn in their home because he's developed, he's developed this system and this program. That it, this to me gives people hope because I know we go after the physical body all the time. We just spent the last almost hour talking about adaptogenic herbs, what we can do for anxiety and sleep and all these things. But the, the key component to making all of this work is releasing the stress and the emotions that keep you stuck. Your emotions can literally keep you stuck in disease. And so I just wanted to interject that because he's, he's got all this great science behind it and all the technique behind it. And I, you know, to me, it, it's like a layman's term. Okay, here, here's what this is. This is helping you release the stress that's keeping you stuck in disease. And it's done in a physical way. Yes. Absolutely. Because yes, that's exactly right. Emotions are, emotions are physical, right? Emotions can be stored anywhere in the body. And really when we, when you break it down, um, some of the great work by uh, Candace Pert, 
um, P-E-R-T, Dr. Kenneth Pert, she's passed on, but she did some great work and showed that emotions actually run our lives. And so emotions are physical. Emotions are neuropeptide-like structure, and they can, meaning like a protein-like structure that can be stored anywhere in the body. And what they do is emotions actually become, they, they become basically the mind and they, they become the subconscious mind and they start running our lives. So a lot of times people, they don't know, they don't know why they do certain things. They don't know why they're stuck. They don't know why they're stuck in a disease, any type of chronicity or chronic type of disease. There's always you guys always there's an emotional component if you're alive and breathing there's emotion we are mammals there there is emotion and so the emotions are our minds are very smart our excuse me our bodies are very smart is we we like to form patterns it's like when you're driving in ninja mode you get home you're like how did i get home and you, you, you know, you obeyed all the laws, but because you've done it so many times, it's repetition. It's the same thing with emotion. And so quite simply put, the emotional stress release starts to help bring an awareness from subconscious to conscious awareness. And then it actually starts to help change so that you can actually change and move forward in progress. Is this a daily uh, practice? I would recommend it daily, absolutely. And then when you get when you get stuck and you can't like, man, I'm stuck. I can't quite move forward. I can't quite figure it out. Then I recommend meeting with a professional, a doctor who's trained in this, and then you can actually go through that uh, type of experience. But yes, I would recommend it daily, or at least try to do it five days a week. Where do we find you doing this? I am. You know what? I will create a specifically. There's a new video because we just revamped it. It's even better. I changed a little bit. And so I, if you want me to give you that, it's ESR3.com. So emotional stress release and the number 3.com, ESR3.com. And you can actually find it there. Um, you won't find it when you release this. It will be there and you'll see it will be under self-ESR. And that's where you would find it. Self as in? myself as, as yourself yeah there'll just be if you look on the page you, you can't see this right now but there is a on the page it will have selfies are just like a tab of yourself and then ones for professionals if you click on the professional it just takes you to it's for professionals you don't i mean it's to learn how to actually take care of patients but if you just go to the um that self esr under just esr3.com and there'll just be a little uh link for self perfect ESR. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. That's, that's exceptional. And, um, yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to teach my clients that I'm working with, um, this as well. So see, you're, you're paying it forward. This is great. Jane, how do people reach you? How do people get your products? Uh, well, I have a website. It is barlowherbal.com. So B-A-R-L-O-W-H-E-R-B-A-L.com. And I also have a YouTube channel, which you can, it's Barlow Herbal. And you can see a lot of videos uh, of not only myself, but the goofy Dr. Nielsen, if you need to put a, <laughs> a, a face to the voice of the, the, the amazing. That's, you know, we, we've only known each other about four, four or five years, but when we met at a conference, it was kind of an immediate, uh, you're a like-minded kindred soul kind of person. And um, yeah, so he, so yeah, so you can find me at uh, barlowherbal.com or my YouTube channel, which is, the goal is education. You know, exactly. just doing here, let's get people education and they can make the right decisions because everyone's a little bit different. Right, in right. The way they take care of their health and the things that they need. But we also have a lot of similarities in the things that we need and finding our own, finding the tribe that, of people that we can relate to and connect with um, is very, very important. Do you offer counseling or assistance with choosing no, the right herbs or do you rely on uh, resources from or recommendations from other providers? You know what? I actually have an online course as well. Um, it's all, it's just on my website. It's uh, it's called uh, How to Be Your Own Medicine Man, uh, Herbal Medicine Man, and it's just uh, you know it's a course you can go in and learn. It's me teaching, 
and uh, it's it's different than the YouTube channel, but it's if people are really interested in, in learning, I don't do consultations. I, I unfortunately don't have time, um, but people can call and they can talk to me. I mean, this if they want to call the company and just ask for Jane, I'll, I will do my best to get back to them. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So do you think we missed anything here? It seems like we have talked about so much in an hour. <laughs> We've talked about quite a bit. We did well. You guys yeah. are awesome. Well, I, I, I hope that we bring some value to your, to your listeners. Cindy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, um, I, truly, I truly think that more people uh, like us that are uh, certainly people can, pres can come to us. They can feel comfortable talking to us. I think that's the type of providers and help people are looking for because there are so many people that have that kind of like, I'm too busy, I, I don't have enough time, I, I can't do this, whatever. But doing this for the betterment of others is really one of the things that I think is most helpful here. So I wanna thank you both and uh, hang on after the recording here and I'll just sign off with you, okay? Thank you. Sounds good. Thanks, Welcome. Cindy. Welcome. For everybody, this is Cindy Kennedy. You've been listening to another episode of Living with Lyme. We were just talking with Jane Barlow and Dr. Nielsen. We've covered so much. So if you missed anything, listen to it again and come back and visit us soon. Take good care, people.